Hey, hey, so believe it or not, this is the good stuff. I mean, the last unit was good, but this stuff is really good. And yes, I'm a science nerd, but I think you're going to enjoy genetics the most. Okay, so go ahead and pull out your uh, notes that say DNA history, structure, and replication. And uh, we're talking about the history of DNA. So before we can go any further, I want to make sure you remember what we said about DNA in the first unit. Okay, so from the first unit, just think for a second. DNA is the instructions to make what? So this is like key. What is DNA? What does it do? DNA, write this in at the very top, is the instructions to make proteins. So remember, it's like the recipe. And from the first unit, we went over how the, the nucleus holds that master recipe. And then the, the DNA makes a copy of RNA, and the RNA goes out to the ribosome to actually make the protein. So DNA is the instructions to make proteins. Okay, so let's review what DNA, we know what DNA does, what's DNA made of? So just write this somewhere at the top or the bottom. DNA is made up of nucleotides. DNA is made up of nucleotides, and that's right there. And a nucleotide is, let's, let's change colors here, a nucleotide is a phosphate, a five carbon sugar and a nitrogen base. So take a second and draw that for me. Sugar and a base. So a phosphate, a five carbon sugar called deoxyribose and a nitrogen base. So I'm drawing that now on my paper. Okay, and that's what a bunch of nucleotides make up a strand of DNA. Okay, so today's lecture is all about the history of DNA. Nobody knew at this time, and we're starting in 1952, and those dates aren't really important, just kind of giving you an idea of how long ago this was. Um, nobody knew that DNA made proteins or what the structure of DNA was like yet. How did we figure that out? Okay, so the first people we're going to talk about are Hershey and Chase. Look at those good-looking people. Wow. Hershey and Chase. Okay, not like the Hershey bar, unfortunately. Okay, so Alfred Hershey, which is the male, and Martha Chase, they studied a bacteriophage. And even though that word looks like a bacteria, it's actually a virus. A bacteriophage is a virus, see it there, it looks like a spider to me, but it's a virus that infects bacteria. So viruses are specific. Some viruses infect you, like the flu or hepatitis or AIDS. Some viruses infect humans, while some viruses infect bacteria. And we have given the name bacteriophage to a virus that infects a bacteria. Okay, so they studied that and E. coli. So here this picture is um, the bacteriophage, which is the, the green-looking spider thing, infecting or inserting its DNA. So you can see it inserting its DNA right there. Let's go with the brighter color right there. Inserting its DNA into the E. coli is a bacteria. Okay, so over time... This became known as the Hershey and Chase experiment. Okay, so let me just tell you what we did, and then we'll run through the notes. Okay, so they took the phage, the bacteriophage, and put, they made it, they like highlighted some parts of it. So they highlighted sulfur. And so um, on number one, it says radioactive sulfur. Okay, so out beside, oh, it says it. Out beside that, it says 35 to label the protein. So basically what they did was they, high, they used a highlighter kind of, a radioactive sulfur. And they said, we're going to highlight the protein. 
Now, when that phage puts its DNA into the E. coli, if the phage puts protein into the E. coli, then we'll be able to see the highlighted protein. Okay, well, it didn't. So they highlighted the protein. They let the phage insert its DNA in, or insert something. They didn't know what it was yet. Insert something into the bacteria, and there was nothing highlighted inside the bacteria. So that proved it wasn't protein that was going in. Okay, so then they did the same thing, but instead of doing it with sulfur, so sulfur is for protein. They did the same thing on number five. They did it with phosphorus. So they highlighted the phosphorus. And boom, when they put the phage and the E. coli together, there was highlighted phosphorus or radioactive phosphorus inside the E. coli. And so on number six, it says, this proved that, here's the whole, the whole point, DNA was the transforming agent. So Hershey and Chase proved that DNA was the transforming agent. Okay, so out beside Hershey and Chase's experiment, I want you to write out Sulfur is in proteins, and phosphorus is in DNA, because DNA has that phosphate, sugar, and nitrogen base. So, the phosphorus, right there, that's what was highlighted. Okay, next. Oh, well, here's an electron. So you can see all the phages on the E. coli. How cool is that? Look at that. It's a cool, cool picture. Okay, so here's a picture of Hershey and Chase. They took, we'll just we'll go through this picture. They took the phage right here, that little pink guy, with the, D, with the bacteria, and it put the DNA in there. Okay, so um, radioactive sulfur. So on this first, on the pink, it says... Um, Phage grown with radioactive sulfur. Okay, and then you can see that the pink didn't go in. But here you see they highlighted the DNA and the DNA went in. So do me a favor and pause the video right here and see if you can figure out everything this picture is showing you. Because this is a lot um, to do with the test. Looking at a picture and reading the data shown in a picture. And this is not just this picture, but all pictures. Okay, Chargoff is next. And he was the guy that said A pairs with T and C pairs with G. Basically, he all he figured out, or it's a lot, but what he figured out is if there's a certain amount of adenine, then there's an ex exact same amount of thymine. Okay, so he Chargoff said A pairs with T and C pairs with G. So that's called Chargoff's rule. A pairs with T, C pairs with G. Okay, so I want you to um, write out the side that A is adenine, T is thymine, C is cysteine, and G is guanine. So hopefully I spelled all those right. Okay, so... Um, you can see it's like if there's 32% of adenine, then there's exactly 32% of thymine. So the percentages mash up. So A pairs with T in DNA. And so it's A pairs with U in RNA. And then C pairs with G in DNA. So C and G always pair together. Rosalind Franklin. Okay, so y'all know that girls, what do we like to do? We like to Instagram. We like to take pictures, right? So the only girl, she worked alone. Uh, well, Martha Chase was a girl. But Rosalind Franklin is like the girl who took a picture of DNA. There we go. There's your picture. Except instead of calling it a picture, it's called, underline this, X-ray crystallography. Okay, so, but it doesn't look like I think DNA looks like. Does it to you? But what it is is it's a... She took a picture looking down at it. So it's not like looking at it from its side. So the double helix, right, you know that DNA is a ladder twisted. 
Okay, so she was looking at it. It's a twisted ladder. She was looking at it this way. So she's looking down at it. So now you're like, oh, I see. Those are the nitrogen bases. And that is the twisting. So there's your DNA right there. Um, X-ray crystallographer to look at a picture. This was, ex girls are extremely important. That's all there is to it. Um, and they helped, she helped. James Watson and Francis Crick developed this. The picture indicates the double helix. So underline double helix. DNA is a double helix. And out to the side, I want you to draw just a ladder. So that way you'll know it's a twisted ladder. Um, the picture also indicates the nitrogen bases uh, point inward and are in equal lengths. Okay, so Rosalind Franklin said DNA is a double helix. And Rosalind Franklin said that nitrogen bases are in equal lengths. So what that means with equal lengths, like your DNA isn't, it's not like that one is long and that one's longer and that one's short and that was right. They're all the same length. The nitrogen bases, A pairs with T, C pairs with G, they're all the same length. Okay, now we move on to the famous, I think, Watson and Crick. All right, here we go. Watson and Crick, they got all the credit. They won the Nobel Prize for making, designing the first model of DNA. They used Chargolf's A pairs with T, C pairs with G, and Rosalind Franklin's InstaDNA. No, not really. It's called X-ray crystallography. Um, and they figured out, hey, it must look like this. It's a double helix composed of, okay, so I'm going to show you this picture right here. The backbone, or the sides, the sides of the ladder are a phosphate, the blue is a sugar, and then nitrogen base. So phosphate, sugar, nitrogen base. Phosphate, sugar, nitrogen base. So those are all nucleotides. So pause the video for a second and see if you can see how many nucleotides are in this picture. All right. Well, if you answered eight, then you got it right. If your answer was eight, then you got it right. Okay. Um, so where you put your foot, the rungs are the nitrogen bases. Okay. The only thing we haven't mentioned, and I want you to know this because it's important. Right in the middle, right there, are hydrogen bonds. Hydrogen bonds. Okay, so tomorrow when you get into class, this is what I want you to be able to do. So you may need to watch the video again and get it down pat. But I want you to be able to draw for me tomorrow. Draw a nucleotide. One nucleotide. And that was like at the very beginning of the video. And then sketch a strand of DNA. All right, and I hope that was helpful.